So this was an exercise that the People Power Co-op did. Where we're trying to imagine like a person coming in, what would the person or individual who is requesting the battery or would like the battery would need. We're envisioning going through the steps. Step number one, we wanted the individual to understand and learn how to use the battery um, and to make sure it's not like this form where it's like, hey, imagine that there's a battery, but actually have something that's tangible that they can see, feel, touch, and say, okay, great, this is how it works. So we created the video just showing people how to go through it and also making it readily available offline when it's not being used that individuals can come poke at it and see what it can do and what it can't do. After that, we were inviting people in to become members. So we decided that if, if individuals are members, then they'll be part of the collective. Uh, when they're part of the collective, then they can be loaned a battery. So we decided that the easiest flow that we could imagine is something that's familiar to everyone. And that was the library. So if you go to a library and you have a library card and you check out a book, so that same flow is where you are here, where you remember, you come and you, you check out a battery essentially. I just drop in chat the membership agreement and I really encourage you to click on it and take a look at it. We can take a moment, just have you browse through it, pretend that you just, you were just at an event, heard yes, your talk. And you saw the battery and now you're filling out this membership form. So you can just now put yourself into the situation of going through this process. And then when you're going through this process, you can feel like, what didn't work for me? What I really like. So when you're designing one for yourself, for your community, you can identify what you want to take out. Big thanks to Shareable. We created editable form for you to actually just copy these. Just to state, this is a form that works for us. Every community is different again. So this is a skeleton. You guys take it or leave it, but this is what we have just for individuals to fill out. Some people may say, oh, in my community, we don't have phone numbers or we don't have emails, whatever the case is, understand this is what was suitable for um, our community. Your form may look something like this. It may look completely different, but this is, yeah our offering here. Thank you for recognizing. So the burning question I have about all of this is what do you do when the battery is not returned? If it's like a library, when there's a book, there's an actual charge every day that you haven't returned the book. What do you do? So yeah, this conversation did come up. We spent a good amount of time on thinking about a lot of pitfalls that would come up, like somebody doesn't return a battery, they destroy the battery, they damage the battery. So instead of trying to have individuals be in a position where there was like a liability or take out insurance on it and so forth, what we decided to do was to educate people. We said, if we invite people in to become members and explain to them that this is a community resource and the value of a community resource, that it's for everyone. You break it, you're not breaking it for yourself. You're breaking it for the entire community. Uh, we feel like the onus of, of shame is on an individual and that they do take responsibility and pride. And I'm borrowing the battery, inviting them in to become a member, which is why this is like our number two step here. And we feel like it took care of that entire discussion. If you're a part of something, you're invited in as a member of something, we feel like that's easier than trying to police the batteries on the back end. So we didn't want to get involved in how this box currently runs. So we're trying to definitely think about other ways and other avenues to address the same issue. Thank you for that question. That's uh, how we handled that. In an emergency, a person is gonna want a battery like during the entire time of the emergency. There, so how are you managing that expectation that you only get the battery for a couple of hours and then you have to allow someone else to get to yeah, we don't, we don't stipulate that after they go through and become a member, they go into the membership database and they just sit there like cold storage. So in the event an outage, outage occurs, the individual or whoever the member is would contact one of the organizers and say, Hey, I have the power got shut down on my block and I'm in need of a battery. 
So can we have a battery? We need a battery. And this is where we got into how are we contacted. So we just do a phone tree. Phone trees are pretty, pretty straightforward. We've tried text. We've tried Google Forms. We tried uh, a bunch of different things. But just simply calling one person and that one person calling someone else, knowing where the batteries are, we're, we're very easy to, to contact. Planning like really big when you're not really big was a waste of time. So plan to your size. And then when it's time to expand, then you can troubleshoot those things at that time. But don't go, oh, how are we going to do if this happens and if this happens and if this happens, just, just think right now we need to get this resource out. What's, what do we have at our disposal right now? Great. We have phones right now. This is what we're going to use when we're trying to figure out uh, other communication uh, methods for those outages then solutions will come up in, in that regard later on. So after the person gets the battery, so we loan them the battery. There's a user agreement that they, they complete. Uh, the user agreement goes over again how to use the battery for that safety aspect that we were initially talking about. So, so it's a, a re-review saying that you signed up before, you haven't had an emergency in six months, so now you need the battery. We'd like you to review the safety guidelines of the battery and complete the user agreement, which just says this is a community asset essentially. And I think we'll end up dropping in chat exactly what the user agreement looks like. But yeah, this is a community asset. You're borrowing it from the community. Please take care of it. Here's the guidelines on how to take care of it, do's and don'ts, and then contact information if you run into a problem. So the user would then, there's also a video that they can go and take a look at that I think we shared with you guys. And again, it just goes over to how to use the battery, how the battery works. The battery is then at that point, when they contact us, we arrange a time and a way to get the battery to them. So either they're going to pick it up from a location X or location X is going to figure out a transportation or a way to get it to the individual. And because we have three different batteries and they're three different sizes, they can support different things. So we also created a battery request form just so you can see like what kind of questions are basic questions that we found out that people can click through and say, these are my needs. And so and then internally we can determine which battery, battery. we want to send to folks. Thank you for that. And then they take the battery and they use it to power their equipment. Hopefully by the time that their power outage or their emergency is over, their power will be back online. They'll call us and say, hey, thank you very much. It helped me out. And we'll arrange a time to retrieve the battery at that point. We don't set a limitation. The limitation is basically based off of the battery's capacity. And yes, Crystal. And in fact, we don't even encourage them to retrieve the battery. We really encourage them to take care of the battery because when they're experiencing like blackouts, most likely their neighbors will be experiencing blackouts sometime soon again. So really encouraging the battery to then start moving towards those locations. But if they don't want to have this thing that belongs to somebody else in their house, they could also arrange a way for us to pick up to move out of their house. Thank you for that. That's a really good point. So yeah, having it, having the battery closer to where the battery is needed or potentially needed is uh, definitely a goal of ours. Yes, uh, Stephanie? I think my final question is how are you funding battery for others to be able to keep on site to address their emergency need? I know I could probably come up with enough money to make a couple to share, but it, it seems like it's something that you need to have a lot more capacity so that people can keep them on site at their home. So I'm, I'm just interested. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Within the battery collective, people donate and give resources in order to, to make the batteries happen that have happened. Um, you can source batteries. There's a lot of different ways to do it on the skinny, like where you're not spending a lot of money, upfront money. So you can source used batteries, you can source use inverters. Um, those are things you can do. Wiring, you can source use wire as well. So there's ways that you can make batteries that are, are not that expensive. So, so it's like neighbors donating their car battery put this together for temporary use and then they put the battery back in the car. I like it. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah. So a lot of times people, a lot of times, a lot of times people get rid of car batteries that are perfectly fine too, because they don't test them properly. But um, car batteries, um, there was discussion in the chat earlier about mobile batteries and battery stations. If there is like a catastrophic emergency, like the, the, the easiest way in our community to get batteries is we have these little electrical scooters that people drive around all the time. Those have EV batteries in them. The EV bikes on the side of the road, those all have EV batteries in them. And those are all like lithium, good quality batteries. And I'm sure they'll be sitting there because people aren't thinking, but they're so, there. I'm saying in an emergency. But that goes back to the conversation of what's your definition of an emergency. Yep. And that's for everyone's community to define. So that's what we have here uh, as resources. Yeah. It's it's the same, same agreement I think the community at large would have with like a Walmart. If it's a catastrophic event and Walmart's there, the community's probably going to get the resources that they need from that Walmart. 